Dear colleagues, my name is Natalia Novoselska and I'm really happy to present you my investigation. And this, um, this work is supported by European project Nano Bridges. Uh, before beginning, let uh, me show you my institution, my home institution. It's, it's uh, Odessa National uh, University and here you can see our department of chemistry. Mm, so, nice picture. So let's start again. Okay. And uh, the optoelectronic properties uh, of nanoscale semiconductors are quite different and notably sensitive of their size. Uh, don't uh, keep in mind these colors, just only uh, for, for describe this, uh, uh, this image because uh, different sizes show different uh, uh, electronic properties. Also, it's uh, well known, it's uh, really a uh, usual situation when different uh, uh, materials, different uh, semiconductors show different properties. But in uh, real life, we have uh, uh, some another opportunity because uh, uh, all, all semiconductors show different properties, not only because of their structure, but uh, because of uh, their sizes. So we uh, have a matrix of different properties and uh, the major factors of influence on these optical properties is, oh, okay, uh, is uh, surface defects, separate ligands, and solvent polarity, but for nanoparticles it's very important uh, particle size and shape. So we cannot see it, but here is shape. But uh, as usual, researchers uh, uh, obtain uh, only models for uh, a size dependent pro uh, nonlinear properties or temperature dependent nonlinear properties. But I am um, theoretical chemist and I try to find uh, this matrix how to uh, unify the system of different sizes and different temperatures. And I found an interesting property security temperature because at uh, this point, this security temperature, uh, near, uh, near this temperature, uh, observed really nonlinear and different, property, uh, different optical properties for all semiconductors uh, of all quantum dots, if they have a security temperature also. So in this uh, study, I tried to describe these different nanoparticles uh, by means of Curie temperature for found which, in, in which temp, uh, temperature they uh, should show uh, unusual optical effects. Okay, uh, as I said, I'm a QSR girl and it's a field of theoretical chemistry. It's, uh, uh, we're trying to find uh, how, activity, uh, uh, how activity applied to a property. And uh, I'll show you a brief schema. For example, uh, we have a target property, for example, toxicity. And this toxicity is a function of some uh, structure parameters of investigating partic particles or nanoparticles. As you can see, uh, our aberration uh, decoded as quantitative structure activity or quantitative, quantitative property activity re uh, relationships. And here is a brief schema. How do, how do we... Uh, we investigate our data set. And the first uh, step, we generate, calculate some descriptor. Descriptor is a, a, no, just number uh, which characterize our particle. It could be size, it could be polarity, or something like that. I uh, explain it uh, on the other side. And after that, we select set and try to build model, uh, final equation, which uh, should exp explain uh, how our uh, model can predict our accurate temperatures. And uh, this, all this step I try to uh, explain by means of my data set. So, uh, generation... Oh, okay, that's, uh, that's, a funny, uh, that's a funny phrase. Uh, one of the uh, very well-known QSR guys, is Todd, Professor Todd Deschini, said that all models is wrong, but some are useful. Uh, it's not true only for QSR, QSR but because one, my colleague said that it's like a magic, you just uh, joke, it's just a trick, it's not real physics. But these models, 
um, can be useful, like uh, classical physical models can be useful. So, okay, general descriptors. In current work, I use three types of descriptors. Uh, I think uh, that quantum, chemical, uh, quantum mechanical descriptors and physically based descriptors it should be clear for you because it's really usual situation when some physicists calculate it. And I uh, pay uh, attention all on LDM-based descriptors. LDM-based descriptors is uh, descriptors based on a physical model of liquid drop model. And uh, uh, the main equation here is Wigner's Zeitz radius. It's described uh, simplified interaction in nanoparticle. And uh, because of it's really simple system, uh, we, can, uh, we can describe it by means of uh, another, uh, another uh, descriptors of this model. And because of um, here, here is uh, molecules uh, with compensate forces by uh, by surface and by volume, and uh, in the um, uh, outside uh, outside molecules, is uh, there are no compensation these forces. So we can use some another formulas which describe the surface molecules. Really simple system. And after that, I uh, try to explain these three steps really quickly. And we, we generate descriptors and uh, put it into this magic box of uh, statistics and after that we do some tricks. We split our data set for uh, validation because uh, we don't need uh, our fitting models which can predict only our data set. We should find some unique, uh, uh, unified, unified equation. And we split in our data set on different subsets. It's a procedure uh, called uh, fivefold. And we uh, split our data set on uh, different five uh, tests and uh, work set to create, uh, to create five models. After that, we, uh, after we split our working set, we try to find statistical equation. And we use, here we use, we use BLS methods, the brief schema is, is presented here. And uh, we decompose matrices of our descriptors and our property and uh, have a few models and we estimate how these models can predict our target property by means of RMSE, it's root mean square error and square uh, correlation coefficient. And so, uh, the, there is presented an initial data set uh, it consists of 13 compounds and uh, we use this uh, Curie temperature and uh, after QSAR modeling we, we found that there was three uh, there was three descriptor which uh, uh, reflects uh, this property. It is a gap between home aluminum uh, orbitals and it is uh, aligned electronegativity and also Wigner uh, Z's uh, diameter uh, radius which we obtain by means of liquid drop model and we have uh, final equation uh, which uh, consists of all of this and here in this column you can see uh, predicted uh, values of uh, our temperature. I've tried to, um, I, think, I, I know that uh, all of us like pictures because it's simpler. So, this is our model. Uh, it's quite good by means of uh, statistical characteristics and here you can see uh, agreement between predicted values and absorbed values and also diagram of relative influence of these parameters, of these descriptors uh, which was included in our model. And the last one step is uh, excuse me. <laughs> the last one step is uh, how to estimate other properties and how to uh, uh, ref reflect this uh, this model which I obtain with nonlinear properties. How to wide this range of uh, temperatures, uh, this uh, uh, range of different properties, and so on and so on. But still, it is a question because sometimes. Uh, when I asked uh, our experimentalist, did you have new, uh, some new results, some new values, and said, yeah, we try, we try, we have really good uh, experimental system, but uh, the true, something like that. 
so, but I hope in the future this uh, should be successful, uh, successfully relate my equation of uh, Curie temperature with equation for nonlinear uh, optical states uh, for quantum dots for these semiconductors and uh, uh, on this festive note, I let me finish my presentation and I also want to acknowledge my supervisor, Professor Kuzmin, and thanks to your friend for your attention. Talk is open for comments and discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you for the presentation. Tell me please, uh, maybe I can't understand, but I engaged in optics for more than 45 years. Mm -hmm. Whereas optical properties, and which, namely optical properties, you can calculate this with a group of humans. Yes. Fluorescence, absorbance, polarization. That's what's the problem. Yep. Any, uh, we try to find which property should uh, uh, should be uh, should can uh, can unify these properties on which point of temperature uh, on, uh, for all these semiconductors. Uh, all the semiconductors should have these nonlinear properties. We try to unify this data set because our experimentalists give us really um, different uh, data and we cannot unify it. So, uh, in, th in this step, it's not a final equation because on this step we try to, uh, to relate our uh, ability in which uh, semiconductors should be shown on the near optical properties with which, which namely optical properties, please. Which properties? Fluorescence, absorbance. Uh, we have fluorescence, we have absorbance. It's not uh, just only my work because uh, um, my co workers are try to synthesize and describe it, and I have uh, really different properties, and uh, it was really. Um, difficult question, how to explain all these properties by means of this simple model, because it's only the first, sta first stage of this work. Continuation. But okay. I can use and we are using good working so quantum chemical software, for instance, GAMIS, mm -hmm. HyperCam, and so on and so on. And I can calculate any optical properties, as you call it. Uh, interesting for me, not in vacuum, but in uh, some media, including uh, when I put appropriate epsilon constant. And to that, I can obtain appropriate information for Homa and Luma, and etc., etc., uh, including spectrum of fluorescence of quantum dots, spectrum of absorbance, and so on. But uh, what is new here for optical properties? I am interested because maybe we can use uh, my and postdocs will use your approach, mm -hmm. but uh, try uh, to convince me that your approach is better than known good work in quantum chemical one. Mm -hmm. We try to do it because it's simpler to calculate these descriptors. It's uh, quite quickly, we can calculate all these descriptors uh, for one day, no, uh, for, for example, when we calculate uh, uh, really compl complicated quantum chemical descriptors, we can calculate it. Uh, we have a lot of time, we should uh, have to let a lot of time to calculate it. So, uh, when I calculate, for example, uh, I don't remember, uh, zinc oxide, I, it was cluster, and I spent a lot of time to find which homodomer gap it should be here. So we try to find another approach to make n not really clear prediction, but uh, I think uh, that experimentalists, when we show its uh, equation, uh, said, okay, uh, we should, fi should find our properties between near this temperature, Thank for you. example. Here, uh, uh -huh. another approach, here for me. Uh -huh. Another approach, okay. okay. So I am afraid that there is no, no time. time for discussion, so thanks for that. Thank